Exactly. Okay, allow me to introduce Wayne Smith, the general manager of Oaklawn Park. Good morning. And David Longinotti, our director of racing here at Oaklawn Park. Good morning. Just by show of hands, have we had our, is our other barn tour returned? It is? Okay. Yeah. The, the, All right. Just want to make sure. By show of hands, how many people do own currently or have owned thoroughbreds in the past? Oh, we got a good show of hands. Oh, wow. That's quite a few. And by another show of hands, how many made a profit out of it? Not one, as many. One hand. Nice. <laughs> I know go. Joe Ragsdale. Yeah. <laughs> so, you don't count, Joe. So a minimal, yeah, yeah. Sarah says. <laughs> Did you win count. a stakes race? Yeah. All right, there you go. All right, All right, good. All right. Another show of hands. How many of you are from Arkansas? Oh, I love it. Awesome. Excellent. I love it. Okay. So one thing that Oakland is doing this year is something that has been popping up all over the country, and it has been a huge success. Churchill Downs in Kentucky, Prairie Meadows in Iowa, Indiana Grand in, well, you know, Indiana, Remington Park in Oklahoma, Canterbury Park in Minnesota, Fairground, you know, like I said, that Minnesota, Fairgrounds in Louisiana, Lone Star in Texas, and this year, Rudoso in New Mexico, and now Oakland Park right here at our home track. So whose brainchild was this? Uh, I guess it was Wayne. mine. We, it was Wayne's. We, we kind of, uh, I, last year, um, Wayne Lucas came in with Warriors Club, mm -hmm. right? Warriors Club is the horse that the Churchill uh, Racing Club uh, purchased as a two-year-old, and then he came here as a three-year-old before going off to Churchill, and he came here, and he actually did very well. Um, and so I was in the paddock, I think I was with David, and we were uh, watching Warriors Club, and David was telling me where this horse came from, and I said, well, wait a minute, if Churchill can have a race club, how come Oaklawn can't have a race club? So uh, that's, where, that's kind of where it came about, and that's why we're trying, to, trying it now. So let's explain a, a racing club. It's a 501c7, a not-for-profit social club. So it's also a great way to kind of interact with other horse owners. So it's kind of like a country club membership, if you will. And that's exactly the way it is. I, we, I, we don't want anyone going into this. It's set up the same way everywhere it's done. Uh, we don't want members going into this thinking they're going to make a profit, et cetera, et cetera. The only thing it's going to cost you is your initial membership fee. That's it. You get no monthly training bills. You get no uh, bills from vets. Uh, you do to get them. You will be getting a monthly statement, so you'll see all those documents and see what, see what the club is paying. But you, that's the only call, expense you're ever going to have is the initial upfront costs. And that costs us. It's five hundred dollars per membership. It's limited to the first two hundred members. Uh, we, we've uh, selected Ron Moquette, an Arkansas native. As our, who's going to be our trainer. So we're, he's going to uh, take the, the money from the funds and go find a horse, and whatever is left over, is, that's what he's going to be left with to pay his own expenses for training the horse for a calendar year. It's a great, fun way to get involved in horse racing. Uh, no other expenses up front. Uh, Jennifer Hoyt, our uh, media relations manager, is going to be the quote-unquote the racing manager. She's going to be the main contact with the trainer. She's, well, there's going to be a Facebook page. You're going to get contacted on any time the horse has a workout, any training plans, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's really just kind of a fun way to get involved in horse racing at a very low cost and low risk. So the great, the key thing is it's strictly that $500. That's it. You don't get a vet bill. You don't get a vanning bill. You don't get a blacksmith bill. Because basically, if you own a horse outright, it's roughly $3,000 a month. That ain't cheap. So you can have, just for the $500 membership fee, you can have all of the fun and save you that $3,000 because <laughs> my bills are so much more than $500. <laughs> I don't even want to think. No. Because no. you have what? How many horses do you have? Um, well, we have 18 in the barn. Oof. And... 
then we have payroll on top of that, which makes me nauseous every Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Deep. But anyway, but it, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a great thing. And honestly, when I had my first horse, there was nothing like seeing it walk over to the paddock for the first time and seeing it go to the starting gate and seeing it break out of the starting gate. And she ran third or first time out in a maiden 75,000 at Saratoga. And mind you, I had to cool my own horse out of the test barn at Saratoga, and I'm probably the only owner that's ever had to do that at Saratoga. But just seeing your horse compete, there is nothing like it. And I know that all of you that have had a horse before will testify to that. And there is an example of the silks that the horse will be wearing. And I do want to say that Ron wanted to be here, but he is under the weather and was not able to do so, but I did text him, uh, last night and said, is there anything that you want to, uh, let the people they're interested? He says, very few things excite me as much as introducing new fans to racing. He says, I want to show you guys just how awesome these animals are. So Ron is very good at bringing new people to racing and he's very, got a great eye for picking out horses as well. And, and that's important. That's one of the reasons we picked Ron. Hey, he's an Arkansas guy. He is so, I mean, if any of you come out here on a Saturday, his box is a very, in a very visible location. There are always people coming by. He's always very uh, hospitable, particularly to new racing fans. And the other thing is that, that he's done a pretty good job in recent years of going to sales and picking out horses for economical prices that have turned into pretty decent horses. Horses like Far Right, like Whitmore, like Petrov. All of those horses didn't cost a whole lot uh, by most standards at the yearling sales or the, two, or the two-year-old in training sales. And all those horses have gone on to earn a lot of money uh, for their owners. So the club is limited to 200 people. And is there maybe a price range of a horse that is being potentially looked at? Yeah, I would say that uh, we, we, with the 200 people, that'll give us about 100,000. We're probably looking into the 50 to 60,000 range for a horse. Um, uh, maybe 40 to 60, depending on what Ron can find out for us. Um, that seemed to be a pretty good price. That gives us enough runway for Ron to train the horse. Um, we'll probably go out this summer with the two-year-old sale and, and get one. Um, he'll, uh, he'll probably train, uh, maybe run a race in Keeneland or something before coming here for our meet next year and be, be, our, be our, our horse. Um, it be your horse, hopefully. Ho hopefully you'll want to be a part of it. But uh, one, one thing to expand upon Ron and the things that we're going to do, it's all going to be social media based. So uh, Ron is a social media king when it comes to talking about him, you know, his, his racing stable, all of his horses. Um, and uh, we will also make sure that the day that the horse race is here, um, we'll have seats free for all of you that, that want to join. And we'll also have a little special, special area for you to all watch the race and then hopefully get into the winner's circle and then we'll have you in the winner's circle picture. So and I think that's a lot of the reasons why folks actually own a horse is to get into the winner's circle. So that's our hope. So I know that Churchill Downs, they started out with a one horse and it's grown over the membership. Is that a possibility that you'll start out with one, obviously, to get the ball rolling? Could it expand further? It could if we would, if the horse wins, uh, like like Warriors Club did. I think what Churchill did with Warriors Club is they won enough money that they were actually able to go buy another horse for those same folks that were in that group. So essentially, you got the benefit of owning two horses for the price of five hundred bucks. So um, you're not going to get your money back. So again, it is a social, social membership, club. social club. Uh, so we want to make sure you understand that. But the opportunity to actually maybe get a second, maybe even a third horse, depending on how well they do, um, then uh, yeah, that's that that's our goal. So if there are profits, where does that money go? Does it just filter back in for the expenses? It will filter back into the expenses, but this is for a year. Um, and once, if we are to have profit, we'll, we'll make two to, one of two decisions. We either buy an, another horse and let it go for another year, or we um, will give the, uh, 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 the, um, the remaining money to charity. 
and, and potentially a thoroughbred charity? Potentially a thoroughbred charity, yeah. I believe we decided on... Uh, 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 if there's money left over, we, what we determined is we'll give that money to like a thoroughbred aftercare alliance or one of those associate, the people associated with uh, the care of horses at, when they're done racing. And the cool thing about that is you'll be, you'll be notified of all the things that we do um, through email, through social media, all of those things. You'll be the ones that will be a part of the program. So, um, so we'll, when we make those, those decisions, we'll make sure that you're first to know before anybody else is. Now, this just launched just a couple of weeks ago. Last, last, last week. week? Last week. Last uh, Saturday was when we opened it up. Uh, so right now, at the last count, and this was through yesterday, I think we had about 103 members mm -hmm. at somewhere in that area. So we still have some openings left, about 97 at the, at the count, at our last count. So if you're interested, go to oaklawn.com. You'll find a banner link uh, for the Oaklawn Racing Club. Click on it. There's items to download. There are links to an online wagering purchase. Or uh, if you want to take care of it more in a per more personal nature, we've got people at the information booth today uh, that are prepared to, to, with all the documents for you to fill out. You can write a check or, or cash, and, and we'll take the membership that way as well. Voucher? Would you take a $500 voucher? Uh, no, no, we'll no voucher. <laughs> no, no voucher. But actually, I think we've got about 97 people here. You guys ready to sign up? <laughs> sign Anybody bring up. their checkbook? Are there, are there any limitations? Are there any restrictions? Well, there are some restrictions. It's only one purchase per person, uh, so you can't buy multiple shares. Uh, the other aspect is if, if you work for Oak Lawn, uh, you can't buy a share. So sorry, Nancy. Really? Yeah, you're out. Uh, or, I'm out. Yeah, and I'm or bummed. The, or the spouse of someone who works at Oak Lawn is ineligible to participate so as out. well. So right. Yeah, you know, Paul's out. Our, Regina's our, out. Audrey's out. The biggest reason why we're trying to do this is to, as Ron mentioned, increase the fan base. We want to give new fans the opportunity to own a racehorse when, in fact, a lot of you would never in a million years think you could own a racehorse. And so this is really for you to have an opportunity to have some fun with it. And it is an enjoyable experience, as you know, as you well know. Very much. And it's not restricted to Arkansas residents. Oh, absolutely which not. Which I think is cool because some of these racing clubs are actually restricted to in-state residents. Ours is not. You can be, you can be, doesn't matter where you live, you can still participate. So I know there's a, always a lot of people that come down from Missouri, and I think that, that'd be great a for absolutely. a lot of our Branson fans. Yes, yes. Uh, Oklahoma, you, you name it. Wherever they're from, we want you to, we want you to be a part of, part of our program. Oklahoma is very special, as, as all of you know. Many of you have been around for many, many years and have seen the growth of Oklahoma to where it is today. And um, we just want to continue to enhance that experience for each one of you. Now, Wayne, you're an East Coast guy. I am. I am from Rhode Island. Anybody know where that is? Everybody know? It? Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> Says the East Coast. Says the East Coast. Know where it is. <laughs> the um, yeah, I'm from a, I'm from a state called Ro Rhode Island, as we like to call it, the biggest little state in the union. How sweet! Isn't that nice? Isn't that precious? Yep. Or the ocean state, whatever one you want to call it. So you have predominantly a gaming background. I do. Mm -hmm. But we're just thrown into the deep end of the horse racing side of things. Yes, very much so. And you come to Oaklawn and you know, you're one of the top three, five racetracks in all of America. And uh, yeah, thrown into the deep end. It was, uh, it was quite, quite an, ex it's been quite an experience. This is my second uh, live meet and um, it has just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. So what were some of the things that might have surprised you when you came here? I will tell you, quite honestly, the fans, the amount of fans. I mean, I've been to racetracks around the country, and you do not see, I mean, as many people as, as, as we have here for Dawn at Oaklawn, there are many racetracks that are racing on a Friday or Saturday afternoon that get about as many fans as we have right here. So, um, no, it's, it is just the most amazing experience, and the passion for the horse you know, is really what, what, what amazes me. And it's not just the different trainers, but the fans, the fans and their passion, um, the amount of families that come. I saw that there were some kids here, um, some young, young folks that come and, and, and get, ex get experience to this. You just don't see that around the country. Oaklawn this past Monday, Tuesday, was the host track for the 17th annual track superintendents field day conference. And there were track superintendents from across the world, actually, not just North America, a lot of uh, track supers from 
Canada, Brazil, uh, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they were all so impressed about the facility and just the town in general, and they went to the races this past Sunday and were amazed about the attendance. Mm-hmm. So it's just a testament about our our little track. You know, it's, it's incredible to talk to the jockeys. You know, we, we I did a, um, we, David and I were a part of a, of a little panel um, for the local Rotary Club uh, this week. And the jockey, Alex Berger and then uh, Thomas Van Berg, they were talking, the trainer, they were talking about um, how special Oaklawn is because you go around the town and people will ask you, um, servers, uh, hostesses, they'll, they'll ask who won the fifth race, who won the sixth race, um, how, how do you like your horse in this race, how do you like your horse, you, and they don't get that around the country in other places that they race, so um, this, is a, this town envelops Oaklawn, this state um, envelops Oaklawn, and we're just so proud to, uh, uh, to be a part of it. Now, do you think some of that has to do that it's been strictly with the Sella family in its entirety? Oh, I'm sure it has a part, that, 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 that plays a part in it, for sure. Um, but it is a family owned, it's the same family. We're now into the fourth generation uh, running this racetrack. It's 113 years old, uh, I think, 114 years old now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it is, uh, it, I, I, I truly do. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It is because it's family owned. It is Arkansas. I mean, it, it is Arkansas's, um, what, only professional sports franchise it is so um even though it, we like to think the razorbacks are well close we said to professional it, <laughs> we, we didn't okay, say little might, might tick off some hog fans right there <laughs> but you know <laughs> um no i think it's uh, i think it's wonderful i think it's a great place and um and i think our fans show that every single day now david you've been with the track since 1980 well, no, not that long. oh sorry 1990 <laughs> Actually, I, uh, my association with the track goes back to the does go back to the eighties. I I started out as a sports writer for the local newspaper and was up in the press box and was the handicapper for the newspaper for a couple of years. But it actually goes back farther than that. Uh my family has been here since right after the Civil War. Uh so when Oakland started, <laughs> one of the when the Hot Springs Businessmen's League started the petition to get Oaklawn back up running again in 1934. One of the signatures on that petition was my, was my great-grandfather's. Uh, he ran a hotel down in downtown Hot Springs. Uh, but I've been associated directly with Oaklawn since 2006, uh, December of 2006. So 2007 racing season was my first year uh, as director of racing. Prior to that, I worked for their advertising agency for 10 years. Uh, also, you know, my first job in racing was when Remington Park opened in 1988, moved from Hot Springs to Oklahoma City, and we used to sit around in meetings there at a, this brand new racing facility in Oklahoma, where, you know, in Oklahoma is kind of like Arkansas in the fact that everyone loves horses there. Uh, there are more horses in Oklahoma than there are people. Uh, so, you know, the first couple of seasons were very successful. Then the attendance started going down, interest started going down, so we used to sit in meetings going, how can we get the atmosphere that Oaklawn has? And the simple fact of the matter is you can't, because the Oklahoma City isn't Hot Springs. Hot Springs is what, you know, Oaklawn is, helps make Hot Springs special, Hot Springs it helps make Oaklawn special. That's very true, and we have seen kind of a resurgence of the popularity of Oaklawn and the quality of the horse, and certainly the the purse structure has not hurt that either. <laughs> so. Not not at all. No, the games of skill have really helped us uh, put a purse structure together that has um, attracted uh, some of the best horsemen in, in around the country. And segueing that into the racing festival of the South, uh, the closing week. Um, I know that's one of the things that I look forward to because a lot of the horsemen from around the country kind of converge in Hot Springs, and it's kind of like reunion time. Mm-hmm. You get to see people that you only see that time of year. Is there anything particular that, that you kind of look forward to? Um, I, yeah, it's kind of a bittersweet thing, obviously, because right. it's the last day of our of our meet. And, and um, But no, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It really is. It's a special time. It, I mean, this year is going to be a lot different because we are actually going to open the infield on Friday, 
which we hadn't done in the past. With um, and we're going to have tents up, so you can you can buy. I think there's still a couple of tents available for Friday if you're looking forward to a tent in the infield and kind of hang out. But um, we got a lot of things planned, and we're hopeful that it really comes and it culminates the end of a yeah. four month meet for us. Now the three year olds campaign has really kicked off since your era coming into uh, your uh, director of racing it, duties. It, the, the shift actually started occurring in 2004. Mr. Sella and, and the, the Oakland management determined that at that point, uh, previously, yeah, they had had good three-year-old racing and they always had strived to get horses in the, in the Kentucky Derby and the other Triple Crown races, but they had kind of an overall focus as well. In th beginning in 2004, when Mr. Sella put up the $5 million bonus for any horse who could win the Rebel, the Arkansas Derby, and then go on and, and win the Kentucky Derby, they kind of focused every, everything on, the, put a lot of focus on the three-year-old racing. And then, you know, a, you know, 100,000 to one shot, we had this little horse named Smarty Jones come in from Pennsylvania, trained by someone that no one here had ever heard of by the name of John Service, ridden by a jockey that no one had ever heard of named Stuart Elliott. He comes in, wins the Southwest, wins the Rebel, wins the Arkansas Derby, every race better than the last, then wins the Kentucky Derby, and Mr. Sella had to cut a check for $5 million. And they actually flew up between the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. Uh, there was a group that flew up to Philadelphia Park, which was Smarty Jones' kind of home track, and cut the check for $5 million. And I remember a quote from Mr. Sella saying, this is the best $5 million I've ever spent. And it really was, because from that point forward, that established us as you know, kind of one of the leading spots to prepare a Triple Crown horse. We got a Fleet Alex the next year. A couple years later, we got Curlin. Then, of course, you know, the, the ultimate was 2015 when we got American Pharaoh, win the Rebel, the Arkansas Derby and become the first horse in 37 years uh, to win the Triple Crown. If you go back and look, the 11 previous Triple Crown winners had never, ever stepped foot in the state of Arkansas. For the first one to ever campaign in the Midwest and go on to win the Triple Crown and do it at Oakland is a very strong statement for our racing program. And it's amazing also to look how many horse of, horses of the year have campaigned here at Oakland or that's raced a, here. That's another point that we were also like my first year was 2000, my first live racing season was 2007 when we had Curlin, who was two time horse of the year. In the first 100 years of Oakland, we had two horses of the year, Cigar and Azari. Since then, we've had five, two if you count, or actually seven, six, excuse me, if you count the two years for Curlin. So the racing here has just gotten better and better. And a lot of it is due to that building at the end of the room that, that Wayne alluded to, because that goes into the purses. Uh, we promised back in 2005 during the campaign that we we're doing this to support racing. We've lived up to that promise, and the people of Arkansas and the surrounding states really come in and, and support racing because they recognize quality racing. But I do like that Eric Jackson, who is still very much involved, always says racing first. And you know, that's a very key, and actually it's, it, it's, it's Lewis Sella. It's the Sella family. They have always said racing comes first. So no matter what you do in the game room, the game room is here to support racing, which is not what you see around the rest of the country. Right. Um, there's a lot of the bigger gaming companies that have taken over a lot of racetracks, and what they do is they, they see the money of the, of the uh, game room, and they start to dwindle some of the experience on the racing side. We do not do that. We have actually raised purses now for- 18 consecutive years. 18 consecutive years. And we've done it mostly now over the last 10 years uh, due to the gaming side. And um, as gaming grows, so does the racing pro product. And increasing purses, another way to obviously increase the fan base is through these racing clubs. And you know, you see a lot of syndicates, you know, trying to get owners to come in and buy fractions of horses, but you still have the bills that come in when you have a syndicate. And the horse racing club is a good way just for that single membership to get all of the fun just for that no bill. No bill, 500 <laughs> but bucks. You, but yet you still get to experience the all that goes with it. That's exactly right. And it's got, you know, a full year of, of, of excitement. We hope. It will.
It right? will. And potentially, you know, it will start out with just the one horse and potentially parlay into a As who knows what. Who knows what. That's, that, that's right. Fingers are crossed that uh, we fill the club. We need 200 people. So as soon as we get 200 people, it's a go. We'll close it up and then uh, we'll get Ron going. So he will, you think he'll start out at, uh, at horse sales or private, private sales, or what, I, I, what's, what's the potential game plan for those that are, that are interested? From what Ron has told me, he believes there's a couple of way, different ways he could go. He, he may go to a sale um, and take a look, see if he sees anything that, 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 that strikes his eye. If not, there is some opportunity for, for, for private sales. I believe the one from Churchill actually came from a private sale. Um, it wasn't a two-year two sale. So um, uh, it, I guess Ron has kind of an idea in his head. Um, and he's kind of keeping close to the vest at this point uh, as to where he thinks he can get the best horse. But he'll be out there. He'll be out there during the summer. And trainers do work very closely with horse agents and pin hookers in regards to, you know, how to find a good horse, a good quality horse. And every trainer has somebody that they trust mm -hmm. in regards to uh, horse contacts. That's right. Anybody have any questions about the horse racing club? Simply five hundred dollars. Yes. That's a good idea. Can you purchase one as a gift? Um, we, let us let us get back to you on that one. Figure something out. I Absolutely. I, I don't see why why we can't. Be can. a great Easter gift. Yes, uh -huh. we could figure something out for that. Sure. Absolutely. The goal is to. You know, once the 200 are met, 200 uh, required memberships to proceed is to go ahead, purchase the horse, have the horse start a couple of times in the fall. That way, come opening day, the horse is ready to rock and roll. That's right. So That's exactly right. And obviously, Pat Pope will know where the horse is pointed, so that race is pretty much a guarantee to go. We'll make sure that, that <laughs> we'll make sure that you, you you get you get some good races. So. <laughs> Anything else to add, David? Uh, no. I, I, however, I do see. I, I, I need to put someone on the spot here. I, Jesse Ullery with Keeneland Sale Company. I see him standing on the apron. Raise your hand, Jesse. Uh, you know, let's ask him all together. Give us a discount at a couple of sales coming up, would you? I think ten. Can we do that? No sales tax. Thanks. Something along those lines, right? Horse ownership. Yes, sir. Well, we won't. Uh, the question was, what happens if we go over $100,000? We won't because we're limiting the memberships to 200. So the... Well, on the expense side, you're not going to see any more expenses. I mean, it it's might a flat actually end up... $500 membership. You won't right. incur any more expenses. That's it. Any other questions? We have papers for you to sign. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're ready to go, we're, we're ready for you. Yeah. Yeah, if you Once again, uh, go to oakland.com. You'll, you'll find a, a, a banner ad for a, a banner kind of halfway down the page or below it for the Oakland Racing Club. Click that. Uh, you can find more information there. Uh, and then if you want to do it electronically, there's a link to actually a, a, a website called eTix that you can click on and purchase it right there with a credit card. Uh, we're going to have people at the information booth ready for you today and every other racing day until we sell out. Uh, so you can do one of two ways. And again, it is a not-for-profit social club. And it's a great way to interact with other horse owners. And it's almost like a country club membership. It's a, it's a great way to get out and, and meet and socialize with other people. I know a lot of other uh, racing club members at other racetracks, and they've become very, very dear friends and socialize off the racetrack as well. So anything else to add, Wayne? No, other than thank you. Thank you for being a part of Oakland. And on behalf of all of our team members, we want to thank you for being a part of Dawn at Oakland. Um, they, we love this program. Nancy and Jennifer do a great job in putting this together between the barn tours and the interviews. I know you're all looking for Wayne Lucas. She said that she probably, you probably thought that was going to be the case, but it was really Wayne Smith that was going to be here. So, so I apologize up front, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, we, uh, we thank each one of you for being a part of our program. And uh, here's to a great next two weeks. I'm going to put you on the spot for oh, a no. second. Oh, boy. Anything up and coming within like the next five, ten years? Oh my goodness! Um, 
we are always trying to enhance the, the, the fan experience. Um, we've tried to do that particularly, uh, well, we try to do that for the fans and we also try to do it for the horsemen. Um, we have over the last couple of years, we've built five new barns. Uh, we built three last year. We increased our parking for our fans so that you can have closer parking. We've, uh, we've added new boxes in the north end. We've added um, and we trialed in our paddock box area um, to uh, uh, have box service with food and beverage right there. Um, we've uh, tried to enhance uh, what well, we made sure that we redid our track last year. We've, um, we've done a number of things that are here for the fans. And so for the next short term, five to five years, three to five years, that's what we're going to continue to do is try to enhance that fan experience, continue to uh, build barns, uh, get new parking. Um, we added one of the most amazing things to, and I think transformative things for Oaklawn for over the last hundred years is we added the American Pharaoh Park out front. If you have not seen it yet, please go out front and take a picture around that uh, statue and around the park area. Um, there's a couple of cool things that will be happening next year that I, won't, I, I will not share. Um, unfortunately, I will not give you the scoop yet. Um, but when you when come back... You? next year when you come back see every time when i come back i'm like oh wait that's new that's new that's new that's new i think um if from the horse horseman perspective you guys are going to love it from a fan experience you're going to love it because it'll put things closer to you and um, we're just going to continue to enhance the the experience well and, we look forward to that and before we go i want to brag on something else new that that wayne got us started on this year uh and all you guys please tune in today nancy and vic have a pre-race show where they go through the card make selections. Uh, so please tune in for that. That show is a wonderful show. I'm addicted to it uh, because I like the competition between Vic and Nancy. He likes to see Nancy. me get tortured, that's why. Uh, oh, I don't know about you that. You will notice when Vic makes a pick that Nancy doesn't like, she has a Hall of Fame eye roll that's to die for. I wish I had that I resemble that remark, David. <laughs> she has but facial expressions that... Or when just, he calls me names, I just... Oh, yeah. The, uh, uh, but I, I will, that's a great point, David. Yeah. That show, what we're really trying to do is... We're not, number one, these two are phenomenal. I mean, uh, Nancy and Vic are phenomenal on it. They have a great back and forth. It's, it's wonderful. But what we're really trying to do is get folks here early. And I will tell you, if you follow her, you'll make some money. You will make some money. Unfortunately, I have not made any money because I don't follow her. So, um, but you need to. If you can follow her picks, it's a wonderful. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It That's is a word, great, uh, great one show. One word to uh, use. All right. If anybody has any questions, I have a sample of the paperwork. Or if you come back during racing, the information booth, the lovely Redcoats, who I absolutely adore, will be more than happy to help you. So Wayne Smith, David Longinotti, they are my bosses. So please give it up for them. Thank you.